Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. Can I have a quick plus one in the chat if I'm visible as well as equally audible? Then we would start right away. Let me turn on my preview screen. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah. I think I should be audible enough. Geeks for Geeks. Okay, Bharat Sai. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, now, now we would start right away. So, today, howsoever simple the question may seem, but the today, welcome to the problem of the day. And the name of the problem is majority element. It is the problem of uh, 1st September. And it, uh, the topic is array and searching. Now, howsoever simple or easy it might be, but this problem came in Acolyte, Amazon, D Shaw, Microsoft, Nagaro, Google. Okay. So this howsoever simple is a important problem. Not an important problem. In my view, it is the most important problem. Okay. So we would now move to the problem statement. The problem statement is very easy to understand. The problem statement is such that we are given an array of n elements and we need to find the majority element in the array. A majority element in an array A of size n is the element that appears more than n by two times in the array. Okay. Now, the question is, the main question is that the question is simple and is easy to solve. Okay. The it is very, uh, it is very much evident from the example, it's a uh, question itself that now what the question is, to, I, I would give you a sample test case. Suppose the question has given three, one, three, and then suppose three. So we know that three occurs more than n by two times. 3 occurs 3 times, so n more than n by 2 times. So we would be reporting 3. 3 would be our answer. Okay. So this is quite so this is quite evident from the sample itself that what we can do is we can simply store the frequency of all the element and the element which is having a frequency more than n by 2 would uh, would be our answer, which is quite clear. But whenever you are given this in an interview, I suppose that everyone is preparing for interviews. The first thing that you should do is you should ask about the range of the elements. Okay. Suppose the range of the elements is quite small. Okay. Suppose the range of the elements is up to 10 to the power 4 itself. So what you can do is you can simply make an array of 10 to the power 4 plus 1 and then you can hash each the and you can store the frequency of each element and then you can again iterate and tell the, the value itself okay so this would take you a big o of n now moving forward and now this would take you the big o of n or which is maximum according to the range itself okay now one more thing is that suppose the range given in the question itself is up to 10 to the power 6 so what you can do is you can simply use an STL known as map itself you can store the um, value of map and you can do this and one more thing is that if you want to do the same thing in the array itself and the, and the range is too large but the number of elements is within uh, feasible in an array, suppose 10 to the power 5. So suppose the number of elements is 10 to the power 5, but the value of the array elements is up to 10 to the power 18. So how can you fit that in the array itself? You can do something known as coordinate compression. Okay. If you have not under you, if you don't know coordinate compression, it is not a problem. It is a very simple idea. It is just that we would be compressing the values. We know. Uh, what is like this, I would be telling you the idea of coordinate compression is that suppose we are given five elements. Okay. Now five elements, the range is up to 15 itself. Okay. So what I can do is one, one, seven, nine, 11 and 12. We know that to store the frequency of these all elements, we know we need a array till 15. So what we can do is we can simply keep a nickname for all the elements of the array. Like one would be called, one would be kept in zero, seven would be kept in one, nine would be kept in two, 11 would be kept in three, 12 would be kept in four itself. 
that is all the idea of coordinate completion okay so we won't be because that is the out of the scope and what is the next thing that is needed is it also takes login okay for each storing it uses a map or an unordered map so it would also need login okay so and login would be again the time complexity so it won't help also and if you use map it would be the same complexity now we are we are more interested we are more interested where the value of the element is large enough and value of the element is large enough and we want to optimize today okay optimize not n login we want to do better than n login okay because the expected time complexity is big o of n big o of n is the expected time complexity so we want to do that okay we want to achieve this complexity now to achieve this complexity what can be done okay suppose the first thing that comes in our mind is suppose we have an array of we have an array of four elements okay so now the thing is that i would be keeping up two elements just the two elements so what we can do is x x and x and then y here x is our answer because x is x x frequency is more than n by 2 good to go so now x frequency is more than n by 2 so x is our answer now now the second step the second step is such that the second step is such that now the value of the x is there so what we can do is we can simply consider y as our answer okay y as our answer now when we are when we are coming across a different element we would decrease the frequency of y just the normal what i want to tell you is that suppose there is a valid bracket sequence there is a very important trick that suppose a valid bracket sequence is like this like this so what we can do is we can see when there is an open bracket we can increment when there is a closed bracket we can decrement okay why i am telling you different different ideas and clearly explaining them because this idea is feasible enough but this idea is quite simple but i want what i want you to is i want you to take him take home a lot of ideas okay because a lot of ideas means you are a more experienced person you are a more knowledgeable person and in cpu if you know a lot of ideas and if you know a lot of tricks then you are a, you are a very experienced programmer and your and your rating or your chances of cracking a company is much higher okay so that's why i generally try to do is what i i try to sum up more ideas in my explanation okay so the i the main idea is that when we when we encounter a open bracket we do a plus 1 when we encounter a, a closing bracket we encounter we say minus 1 so 1 1 is 2 itself So two minus two, two minus one, and then minus one. The value would be zero itself. So what the bracket bracket valid bracket sequence? If you do this thing without the use of stack itself, so what is the thing is that at any point the value won't be less than zero, and at the end the value should be zero. Good to go, good to go. This is how you can solve bracket sequence without the help of stack itself. Good to go. Now the same trick, the same trick would be kind of, kind of. implemented here also okay now how it would be implemented i would be showing you okay now suppose y's value is here we start from the back itself so first we consider that our majority element the element which is having the frequency more than n by 2 is y itself okay so at first we would count the value of y y is 1 itself now we would move here now here x is not equal to y so we would simply decrement the counter we would simply decrement the counter then we would again now y's value is zero so we know we know that x might be our answer okay x might be our answer and y also might be our answer now we would again increment and see that we got one more x the idea is such that the majority element use the fact that majority element occurs more than n by 2 what i want to tell you what i want to convey is that suppose the majority elements population is n by 2 plus 1 this is the minimum value of the majority element minimum frequency of n, n by minimum frequency of the majority element and total number of elements is equals to n good to go so now what are the value that are remaining what are the value that are remaining so the value for the other element the frequency that is left for the other element the collective frequency would be n by 2 minus 2 good to go now this is the frequency 
Now, what I want to convey is that if we do a plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus, then this frequency would prevail. This frequency would prevail. This frequency. This frequency would prevail on basis of this frequency. Because whatever be the frequency, whatever be the frequency, at the end, this can't be minus. Whatever be the frequency. Okay. It is such that it is the most mightiest frequency monster. Okay. So if you allow it to fight with anyone else with it, uh, comparing its frequency, it would definitely prevail because it is having the highest frequency. The frequency of this element won't go ever negative. Won't ever go negative or won't ever go negative. Good to go. So now we would do the same thing. And this is known as the voting algorithm. Voting algorithm. Okay. This voting algorithm is kind of like this. That suppose I am prevailing in case of vote. I am prevailing, I am prevailing, I am prevailing. It is just like public. Voting algorithm is like public and the elements are the politician. The politician which is winning, the people would be behind that. And now at any point, if the politician's value is le little bit less than the other politician, then people would, what they would do is, what they would do, they would move to the other popula uh, population. The population would move to the other politician, which is having a higher popularity. This is what we Indians do na, with politician. Okay. So I won't be, the, I am not telling anyone. It is just, just for the explanation, just for the sake of explanation. Nothing else. Don't mix it with politics. Okay. I don't, myself don't know anything about politics. Okay. Moving forward. The thing is that it is the most mightiest and we would do the same thing. At first, we would, we would say that the first element, first element element is answer okay same thing the might the politician the first politician we would see a politician then we would say that this is my superhero same thing so first element is our superhero next what we would do is we would count the value of the superhero we are counting the value of the superhero then what we are doing is we are starting to grow itself we are starting to we are we are, we are do the iteration and now if the value of this count becomes lower, then what we would do is we would simply pick a new element and then we would consider that element as our answer. Okay. New element as answer. That is it. That is it. Now we would, I would move to the implementation as the view count is very less, just one. So I don't think people are live. So I would be wrapping the to wrap up the session first and you can ask the doubts in the comment section. So what I would do is I would move on to the next. Okay. Now the count of the element, the first element is regarded as the candidate. Okay. So if the element is equal to the candidate, we are incrementing the count. And if it is not eligible, then we are decrementing the count. At any point, if this count becomes zero, then we know that the current element is having a count more than one. So we are considering the current element. Okay. So now it might be the case that if that if there contains a majority element, it would definitely tell you a majority element. But this algorithm would definitely tell you a majority element. But it might be the case that majority element does not exist only. Then it would simply consist. Then it would simply if the array consists of a distinct element, then it would simply consist of the first element itself. First element, it will it will say that first element is the majority element, but the first element is not the majority element. Majority element does not exist only. So what we are doing is the value returned by this algorithm. We are checking if it is the majority element or not. Okay. So next we are the next iteration. We are counting. Okay. We are counting the value. So if the count given by that algorithm is greater than n by 2 we are saying that yeah this is the majority element take it if it is not happening then we are already told in the problem statement only that if no majority element exists we would be returning minus one so if there is no majority element then we are returning minus one i think i should be good to go now this is miss siddharth hazard signing off any more queries from your side no there i don't think any any more queries from your side so that's all for today thank you and have a nice day okay